waste system shown in this program does not contain any waste material or chemicals. Consult your appropriate regulations concerning the use of any safety equipment or wearing of protective clothing. This program will introduce you to the vacuum toilet system for the Boeing 767. We will describe how the system operates and explain the function and show the location of the major components. You will find detailed system information in Chapter 38 of the Maintenance Manual. Servicing information will be found in Chapter 12. Most of the major components for the system are located aft in the area of the bulk cargo compartment. In the passenger compartment, the laboratory modules contain the toilets and related equipment. To access the toilet assembly, first remove the toilet shroud. Two levers on the bottom of the shroud release the retaining latches. Next, pull out on the bottom of the shroud until the top clears the upper support. Odors are vented into the shroud and out through the lavatory and galley ventilation system. The individual toilet assembly consists of the rinse water and anti-siphon valves, a Teflon-coated stainless steel toilet bowl with rinse ring and nozzles, a flush control unit, the flush valve and motor assembly, and the manual flush shutoff handle. The complete flush cycle takes 15 seconds. The cycle begins when the flush handle is operated, starting the flush control unit. This unit controls the timing and sequencing of the components during the flush cycle. If the airplane is below 16,000 feet, the vacuum blower for that system starts immediately. Above 16,000 feet, vacuum is provided by differential pressure. An altitude switch prevents blower operation. One second into the cycle, the rinse valve opens, allowing water to flow through the nozzles, rinsing the toilet bowl. Two seconds later, the flush valve opens, allowing the waste water to be drawn into the vacuum line. After six seconds, the flush valve closes. At the completion of the 15-second cycle, the vacuum blower is turned off and the system is ready for the next flush cycle. The manual shutoff handle is located under the front of the toilet. Pull the handle to close the flush valve. Boeing 767 lavatories do not have individual tanks. Instead, lightweight titanium waste lines connect the labs to the two waste holding tanks. The waste holding tanks are located in the area of the bulk cargo compartment. Access is through the aft cargo compartment. To access the tanks, loosen the fasteners and remove the panel. The two waste tanks are identical. Each is made of a stainless steel liner, which is reinforced with a composite material. The capacity of each tank is approximately 60 U.S. gallons. The waste tank system consists of the tanks and supporting structure, a water separator, the spray nozzle, two point level sensors, the continuous level sensor, a pre-charge control valve, the logic control module, the drain lines and valves, and the vacuum blowers which are attached to the overhead structure. 
The water separator is located in the top of the tank. This line replaceable unit is designed to prevent waste fluids and solids from being drawn into the overboard vent line or through the vacuum blower. The spray nozzle is located inside the top of the holding tank and is used to rinse the tank during servicing. There are two point level sensors located near the top of the tank. When the fluid level reaches the point level sensors, the logic module inhibits the flushing cycle for all the toilets connected to that tank. This prevents overfilling the tank. Caution. If maintenance and servicing are not properly performed on dirty sensors, toilet system shutdown could occur when the tanks are not full. Tank quantity is sensed by a continuous level sensor system. The sensor is located in the waste tank drain line. It provides a signal through the logic control module to the quantity indicator on the aft attendance panel and a signal for control of the precharge control valve. The precharge control valve is located in the rinse line between the service panel rinse fitting and the tank spray nozzle. When a tank's quantity is greater than six U.S. gallons, the precharge valve will close. With the valve closed, service personnel cannot rinse and service the tank. This is to make sure that the tanks are properly drained before servicing can be completed. A tank quantity of less than six U.S. gallons will allow the valve to open, allowing the waste tank to be rinsed and serviced. Note that the precharge control valve can be manually opened if electrical power is not available. Each waste tank is equipped with its own drain valve. Each drain valve is double sealed to reduce leakage. The drain valve actuating arms are mechanically interconnected so that both open simultaneously when the waste valve actuator handle is pulled. The vacuum blowers are installed in the overhead lines above the holding tanks. Each blower provides the vacuum necessary to operate the toilets with no significant loss of cabin pressure. An altitude switch located in the horizontal stabilizer jack screw compartment inhibits blower operation above 16,000 feet. Now let's take a look at the waste tank system's indication and test capabilities. Most of the system's indicators are here on the aft attendance panel. These include the lavatory inoperative switch lights, sensor fouled lights, and waste tanks quantity indicator. When the lavatory inoperative light comes on, we know that the waste tank is full and that the toilets connected to it have been disabled. The sensor foul lights will come on when a point level sensor is dirty. This indication is also provided on the waste service panel, on ICAS, here on the ECS message page, and on the logic control module. The waste tank's quantity is indicated here on this gauge. The indicator operates when a momentary action selector switch is pressed. The switch allows you to select either the forward or the aft waste tank. An indication in the green band means the tanks have been drained and serviced. During flight, operation in the yellow band is normal. The red band indicates the tank is nearly full and the system could shut down. The waste sensing system can be tested from two locations. The aft attendance panel, using the laboratory and operative switch lights, and at the waste tank logic control module. Pressing a laboratory and operative switch tests the point level and continuous level sensors. The light will come on if all the sensors and the logic control module test satisfactory. Additional testing can be performed at each logic control module. 
These tests can help identify the waste tank level sensing components that are not functioning properly. Each logic control module has a test switch, four status lights, and a power on light. When the switch is placed to lamp test, the status lights are tested. With the switch in the sensor test position, all the sensors are tested. A test is successful when all the sensor lights and the tank full light come on. The 767 vacuum and toilet system is serviced from a single point which is located below the waste tanks. The waste service panel contains a heated waste drain connector, a heated rinse fitting for each waste holding tank, and an actuator handle for the waste drain valves. Pull down on the actuator handle to open the waste tank drain valves. All the fittings are standard and match ground service equipment currently in use. There are three important reminders about the vacuum toilet and waste system on the Boeing 767. First, when the waste tank service panel is open, switches interrupt electrical power preventing vacuum blower operation. Second, when the portable water system is being serviced, water is not available to rinse the toilets and will not be available until the water tanks are pressurized. And third, proper waste system servicing is very important to make sure that the system operates properly. The Boeing 767 laboratories utilize a high technology vacuum flush toilet system. This program has introduced you to how the system operates and to the function and the location of the major components.